everybody, and welcome back to Paradise on Pennies. I'm Heather. And I'm Ramsey. And today we wanted to talk to you guys about what we don't like about our truck camper so far. Um, we're kind of outweighing the pros and cons for those of you maybe that are considering uh, living in a truck camper like we are now, full time. Uh, maybe you're comparing vehicles like we did and you want to know if truck camper is your best option. Um, or maybe you just want it for travel. So here are the cons so far. <clears throat> the first and number one con, in my opinion, is the fact that it is kind of chilly in the camper. So um, we're not typically in the cold that much, so this is not a big deal for us. Uh, but when it does get cold, we've had a kind of a kind of an unseasonably cold winter this year in Arizona, um, co especially compared to our last season here. And so it's been pretty chilly for Arizona. And on those nights, the the pop-up portion does let a good deal of wind and, and cold inside. And it, it is kind of like other people have described it, you know, kind of like being in a tent. So the cold will get through. Um, we do have enough blankets though to stay warm and we cuddle and we, and you know, we get through it. So it's not really a big deal, um, but it is a con. You will be cold when it's cold. So if you want to do something like this in say a much colder climate, um, it's going to be chilly. And I know some of them have heaters and things of that nature. Uh, we don't want the burden of that uh, because we won't be in the cold that often. Um, but that's just a, one really important consideration. Yeah, it's a weird contrast <clears throat> between it's really cold when you get into the camper, but then once you get under the sheets, it's really warm. But then if you have to get out in the middle of the night, it's really cold again. So it's just a weird Yeah, the back and forth temperatures that is not are fun. a pain. <laughs> so um, with that also comes the potential of moisture. Now we had the same issue even in the escape. Whenever it would get, whenever it would drop down and get cold, uh, we would have uh, some moisture issues in the car. And we were kind of worried about this with the truck camper as well. Um, we noticed on the really cold nights, yeah, we do get a little bit of moisture build up on say the windows. Um, we just kind of towel it off. It hasn't been too crazy so far, but there is noticeable moisture. <clears throat> um, our biggest concern with that would be any mold issues that could form in the camper. Um, again, we won't be in the cold that often, so we don't think it's going to be a real big long-term problem for us, but definitely a consideration again for people who will be in more of a cold climate more often. Yeah, and it, and it works out well doing it the way we're doing it because every day we open it up and let it air out so it will <clears throat> dry out. So if you're going to only use it once or twice a week or something like that and, not, and leave it collapse down it's it's it'll probably get mold a lot quicker obviously because there's no air flow to, to dry it out so yeah every day we we pop it up and let it let it dry out so um next um another big thing is just the fact that it pops up um we were used to the escape and just being able to like crawl into the back and go to bed and then crawl to the front to leave and that was uh that was pretty Convenient. simple we just we just took it for granted kind of and now now we knew that obviously we'd have to like crawl to the back and then get in through the back door because you can't just crawl from the truck and then you have to pop the thing up and then you can finally go to bed which was it's kind of a pain but at the same time you you, you weigh it with it so you get the full bed and everything so it's nice once it's popped up and everything but it's just that that inconvenience of having to crawl to the back and pop it up and and make sure everything and then you got to roll these things down if you're in the city for to block the sunlight or the the street lights and everything like that and then and then also in the morning when you're leaving you can't just get up and go like and if you're cooking at night you got to put all your stove and stuff away you got to put all your food in the cabinet so when you're driving it's not bumbling around in the back and then we have to crank the thing down and make sure it's latched and and one of the major things we found out is that with uh, with Heather, she's a little shorter, so she can't really even reach the latches on the outside to lock it. Yeah, it's quite a reach for me to, so, to actually close the camper. <laughs> and then, so. and then, uh, so we we figured out a way. So now she's the one cranking it inside. Meanwhile, while I go yeah. outside and, and make sure everything's latched down. Yeah. But just that convenience of being able to just get up and leave <clears throat> if something's going on or you just need to go. If the weather's bad, yeah. you can just get up and leave. Now you have to. You got a whole process of having to to tear everything down sure. and, and then leave so yeah that kind of goes with I mean a previous video I did where I sort of compared all the different rigs that you could choose from and I showed that graph where I was like well with some of the benefits you receive there were these trade-offs um, and the truck camper was always based on conveniences like you know you you either lose or gain conveniences and then you, you gain something else so yeah so yeah, we gained a so. lot more room but then we lost the convenience of just coming back and sleep and just leaving in the morning so yeah but it's been of, a good trade-off yeah so far so good 
Um, next up, um, okay. there's on, it's not going to be with every truck camper, but with ours, the tie down that connects the truck to the camper goes directly in front of the gas tank. So every time you go to get gas, you have to unhook the turnbuckle mm -hmm. in order to, to get into the, to fill up with gas. Um, they do sell the fast latch turnbuckles and stuff, but they're really expensive. So right now we just have the regular small turnbuckle. So I just hand tighten it so you don't have to crank it down every time. Because we actually had one break just from me over tightening it, which I didn't realize you could do. So uh, we don't have that problem anymore, but it's still kind of a pain every time you have to go get gas to take the turnbuckle off to get gas. Yeah. Um, and then one of, the, one of the main things I think for me is just driving it in general. It's obviously way bigger just driving the truck plus with the camper on it. It's a lot of extra weight that you're towing around. You don't have a good as a vision everywhere you go. And it's definitely more in the city, which we usually don't spend too much time in the city, but right now that's pretty much all where, where we've been most of the time. Um, so just parking in general is more difficult. Driving around is a little more difficult. Um, we usually, like down where in Arizona right now, so we used to go to the university a lot to go to lectures and things at night, and we park in the parking garage. Now we can't do that because this doesn't fit in the garage because it's too high. Um, and then just just basic things around town that's just maneuverability of the vehicle is kind of a pain. But again, the, the, the payoff is, is so far has been better. Um, and then also just once we've, we took it on the forest roads a few times and we got into some pretty, some pretty narrow roads. And with the escape, we've, we got on some pretty crazy roads with that thing. But the turnaround ability of a Ford Escape is pretty much on a dime. I could turn around no, as, as long as I could fit down the road. I could do a 100-point turn and turn around. With this, you need a lot bigger area in order to turn around. So that's been one of the main worries about it so far is if we get to onto a forest road that I can't turn around on, we will have to like figure out how to back down the back down the forest road. So that's kind of one of my big, big <laughs> things right now that we're obviously yeah. that's you have to deal with that one once once you get to it so yeah but i mean from our experience so far we've been on a, a narrow rocky road and um that worked out okay so it's, it's not been too bad but it's definitely yeah. something to consider yeah and then so then it just goes all along with driving is just being in the wind um we haven't been in any crazy wind yet we've been in some pretty good windy days with it with it popped up like this and it really doesn't seem to affect it at all it doesn't really shake the vehicle at all so it's been I've been very pleased with that and the rain and everything it kept the rain out really well so that those were all pluses but then we haven't really driven and wind too much and if you paid attention from like last year when we had the escape we actually had our topper pretty much ripped off of the vehicle yeah when we were down here last year because we were driving in the wind and it ripped it completely open and we lost a whole bunch of stuff so now we're kind of skeptical of the wind and driving in wind so most of the time we stop especially now that we have this yeah i don't really want to uh worry about this thing ripping off or or anything of yeah. anything like that it's frightening too much wind is definitely not something we want to be in yeah. <laughs> but we're doing okay so far so uh so there you have it i mean that's pretty much our list of cons so far um from the truck camper life perspective so again if you're considering getting one um if you're considering living on the road those would probably be the main things that would be of concern just difference in size maneuvering uh, maybe height if you're going into parking garages, worrying about like a couple more inconveniences from wind to having to crank it, things of that nature. So uh, that's it. Stay tuned because next we will bring you guys the opposite list. We'll let you guys know what we do like about truck camper life so far. And uh, spoiler alert, definitely the pros are out uh, weighing the cons so far for us. We like it and it's worth dealing with those few inconveniences. So stay tuned for that one, uh, video, and thanks for being here. See you later, guys. Bye. Bye.